Joan, Energy Safety Institute, VP. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Energy Safety Institute. I mean, I think the name probably describes everything right there in the title, but go ahead and tell us a little bit more about uh, what the Energy Safety Institute is. Right. We provide uh, entry-level oil field training. It's uh, short-term, basically two days worth of training. Uh, One day is all oil field uh, uh, training, uh, different uh, different occupations within the oil field uh, and the drilling end of uh, drilling side of the business, uh, completions, production, uh, any of the equipment and tools that are used. Uh, the second day will be um, pretty much an all-day industry standard PEC safe land safety training. And uh, we provide, uh, basically we provide a, a pre-screening of employees for uh several different service companies. Uh, there's a there's a huge need, uh, as everyone knows, for uh, for employees and, and companies are having a hard time finding the right uh, people to, to hire. And uh, so we, I think we provide maybe kind of a niche in that, in that end of things uh, uh, to get them employees. Um, and also we provide uh, as well networking opportunities. There's uh Sometimes there's uh, trainees that come to us with uh, college degrees that might not be able to find a job with a with a, with a geology degree or some other applicable degree that may be useful in the oil field, but they just can't get in right away. So they, they start out in an entry level position, and then um, when when other opportunities arise with their degree, it will help them uh, you know find an applicable. Uh, position with uh, to use to use their degree with. Well, I was going to ask you about that because you know, okay, you got your entry level training, you've got your day seminars, you've got your uh, PEC Safe Land Safety training. If I wrote that down in time, and then um, I was going to ask you about you you mentioned the word networking because the hottest thing going in oil and gas right now, you know, this is jobs. I mean. The, trying to get the right people to the right companies, to the right trades, to the right skills is a little bit more of a task than I think the average person understood. I don't know if the energy companies thought it would take as long to hire this go around than they did before, but um, I'm hearing that that um, they caught they're caught off a little guard a little bit that they can't hire as quickly as in the past, because for a variety of reasons, the jobs have changed, you know, the, the boom and bust prices, all those different things in there. So uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, that networking side of things, because that was a very important piece to that puzzle. Our companies reaching out to you and saying, hey, you know anybody that can uh, get in the frack world these days? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said, with... Uh with my connections, uh, one of the things I do is I go into uh, you know the local high schools and, and both tech schools. So I get kind of a kind of an in on um, looking at some of these you know the eighteen year olds coming out of high school uh, that in certain areas uh, where we're operating in Western Pennsylvania, there are certain areas of the state that they don't they don't have a clue what's going on in the oil and gas business. So. Um, I can explain that to them and, uh, you know, give them a heads up. And um, and, it's, and the companies, you're right. I mean, they they get hundreds of applicants, and they don't know uh, these applicants from, from anyone. And if I can help in any way, like I said, pre-screen, the, you know, the, the trainees, and I, um, I don't take a dime from anyone until I tell them exactly what they're going to get what they're going to get into out there. They're going to work more days in a month uh, than I kiddingly say than there are days in a month. You know, they're going to work in all kinds of weather, minus 20 degrees and and 120 degrees. I mean, they're, and, and um, they're going to, like I said, they, they might not have a day off for a while, but they're going to make real good money. They're going to have a future. Um, and I tell everybody this uh this this drilling now, especially in, in the shale formations, isn't going away anytime soon. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be like the old days here in Western Pennsylvania of uh, you know the steel mills, which they're revamping a lot of steel mills now too. But um, 
it's kind of the new wave of employment, but if you don't have a clue what it is, and I think that's that's kind of where I come in because, like I said, I do a lot of I do a lot of talks in schools and, and different communities and things like that, and I'm always passing my card around and talking about the business. Uh, so I have a uh, like like I said, I, I think I have a, a little bit of a niche here with these companies because it helps them tremendously because. Like I said, their hiring managers are pulling their hair out right now, trying to trying to get a staff together. And um, and and, and I would, a couple of them have told me that for every eight they hire, they're they're probably lucky to keep three or four um, out there because they either quit or for some reason they get fired. So I mean, there's the, there's a revolving door here that that has got to stop. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a little bit of some vetting going on, a little bit of some screening. You know, I never thought of it from that side. Um, right. A, a lot of us, well, maybe you can even talk about, first of all, how long have you worked in the oil and gas industry? Uh, 35 years. Okay, so a so, little bit more than a rookie. All right, 35 years. Um, <laughs> that's quite a bit. I mean, so you've you've seen quite a bit of the change and the evolution and really how this is a completely different shale play, oil play, whatever you want to call it, than the past years. I mean, to the tune to where the jobs have changed, the business plans have changed, all these different well, things have changed. Um, what, what have you really noticed that stands out as far as biggest changes you've seen in the industry in your 35 years? Yeah, well, I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's just the amount of workers in the, uh, in the, uh, um, just the, the vastness of what's of what's happening in, in some of these areas. I think uh, the, the development across you know uh, uh, states, and, and I think just 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 the amount of employees, the amount of equipment is a lot bigger than any of the booms we we had in the past. And uh, it just takes a lot more people and a lot more equipment, you know, uh, with these shale plays. I mean, we used to uh, we used to drill a well and uh, conventional well in five days. Uh, frack in two hours and put the well online within a day. So within five, six, you know, probably six, seven days, you'd have that well drilled, fracked, and turned online. You know, with uh, with, with a with a few with a uh, with a lot fewer people. You know, yeah. And now there's uh, there's just uh, and and we're going uh, in a lot of cases. You know, like I said, drilling was always twenty four hours a day you know, let's say seven days a week. But on the frack side of things, on the conventional well, it was uh, normally daylight hours, just a couple hours to, uh, to frack a well, um, things like that. So it's, uh, it's just it's just the enormity of, of the, the people, the number of companies that are here is, it, it is, a, lot, it is a lot bigger than, than it ever was, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I think, uh, too, a lot of this, the specialization, I mean, um, there's a lot more technology involved today than, than there ever was, you know, with this horizontal drilling and stage tracking and, and things like that. So, Well, and I kind of I set you up a little bit because I wanted you to explain your, your experience a little bit because what I've seen you do with the Energy Safety Institute, I've seen a couple other veterans like yourself where you've seen such a necessary niche in the industry because it's changed so much that the as you mentioned you know what there's a little more turnover in the beginning than there was before because for a variety of reasons maybe the kids aren't picking up on the technology or they don't understand what grit and hard work is um you know maybe there's some more regulations than there were before because uh, of whatever laws have passed, and so you need more certification and you need more training and yada, yada, yada. It's no different in my business in the media business to where, you know, after I've been in the media business for over 30 years, so I'm, I'm like you where I had to find a little niche area because um, there are holes to be filled, especially in the oil and gas world where, my goodness, I have never seen an economy like within the oil and gas industry. I mean, 
some guy working on a well can invent a vibrating tube and figure out a way to rent it out for two grand an hour the next week. That's incredible that you can have that type of, uh, you know, overnight success and opportunity. I should say opportunity. That's that, that's the word I'd like to get to is opportunity because it's very difficult to have success in the oil and gas industry. But there's continued opportunity. And um do anyway, I'm sorry, I just went off on a little tirade. Did you want you want to comment on that or next co- question or what? <laughs> yeah, you're you're right. I mean, I've seen and you know, in the past ten years, I mean well in the past fourteen years up here in Appalachia when we first uh completed the first Marcellus well and, and uh with the company that I was with, I mean I've seen I've seen people become millionaires. You know, just like you said, they they uh they generate uh, you know, uh, some some piece of equipment they can do something. They they start a company. They, uh, I mean, it, it's it's amazing. You know what has what has what has transpired. You know overnight, and it's uh, you know, and then as far as the employees go, uh, like I said, it's uh, it's uh, there. It's definitely you have to be on your toes. I mean, with. Uh, some employee that that doesn't uh, you know isn't sure of himself out there, and like I said, and that that's what we try to do in our you know with our training is we try to tell them, listen, uh, you can have a whole whole effect on your company and the company that you're working for if you forget to close the valve and you have a leak or a spill on location. The ramifications could be uh, could be unbelievable. I mean, uh, you could lose the lose the work for one company. You could create a, a you know a case where there's a big fine for the for the operating company and, and you could, you guys could be out of work. So, um, yeah, there's a huge need for, uh, like I said, they just can't let anybody in the door. And what's happening is they gotta be, they need workers, Jason, but you know, they gotta be careful who they hire, you know, because it's, uh, uh, like, like I said, they, they could lose, they could lose the work real quick, you know, something, something. Well, to- out totally. There. And, and the way they're coming up with these smart pigs and fracks and all this other stuff, I'm seeing the same thing happen in the non-tangible side, and that's, you know, like the media or or like what you're doing to where the same way that the tangible equipment folk had to become innovative, so did the non-tangible people, the chemists, the the, the safety right. instructors, the, the media personalities, whatever you want to call it. It's it, it, it it's an innovative change out there, whether, whether you have something you can physically touch or whether you have to figure out a, a new conceptual way to to bring a philosophy or a question or a position or like what you do, safety, you know, the safety training, the Energy Safety Institute and everything. So let's circle back there for a minute, because I, li- I like to look at what you've done is kind of reinvent, you know, y- your little business there. Your 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 niche industry is what I meant by little. I didn't mean to <laughs> to, to to put you down. I meant little as in you know small small right now because you found a little niche there. Um, right. T- tell me about that a little bit about when that moment was that you said, you know what, this is what the oil and gas industry needs right now. Yeah. Well, I've I've always. Uh I've always kind of been a part of it. The last 10 years, I've helped uh, set up uh, different oil and gas training for adults as well as uh, high school students in both tech schools. And, um, you know, watch that, you know, flourish. And then we had, we had a downturn and some of the adult programs went by the wayside and some of the high school programs, well, they just didn't get the kids because there wasn't any jobs. So, you know, like, so with this, with this next upturn here, um, I happened to get a couple of individuals' jobs here in my hometown, and I just thought, you know what? And, and talking with a lot of the service companies too, uh, they said, "Mike, we're pulling our hair out." I mean, I'm good friends with a, with a lot of these service companies, and you know, we need we need good people. We're going to lose work, and I thought, you know, maybe the time is right for for me to get involved with this and do this, uh, you know, get, get this going again. So um, I just kind of took the bull by the horns and. I said, I'm going to do it, you know, this time rather than, you know, have it go, go with somebody else. And then, uh, and you know, it's working out. Like I said, it's short term. That's all you need for entry level right now. Now we can progress into, uh, incumbent worker training or we can specialize if there's a, if there's a roustabout company that wants to us to specialize in cutting and threading pipe or, 
you know, um, that kind of a thing or flow back or whatever. We can concentrate on well, lease operation. I've been a lease operator back in the day as well. So, um, we can do that. We can, we can specialize in those kind of things too, you know? So, but it's, uh, like I said, it's, 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 it's the educational end of things. It's, yeah, I think it's educating people on the oil field because, um, like I said, there's a lot of people that don't understand really, uh, what it entails, how to drill a well, you know, where the activity is. And, and when, when certain, when, when some people go out of their, like I said, out of their, uh, out of their area where they live down into some of these areas, I, I trained up, uh, a few workers already and, and, uh, out of Northern Pennsylvania here. Um, and they went down into the area and those guys just couldn't believe how much activity and, you know, young guys in the business like them, you know, are at the gas station going out to eat, whatever. And I go, Holy cow, we didn't realize that any of this was happening, happening. And actually, uh, two of the trainees had college degrees. And, uh, uh, if I can, I'll just go into elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, there was, uh, two young, two young men that had degrees in geology and couldn't find a job. And, um, I told them, I said, I will get you out on the well pad. It'll be an entry level job for now. You'll be able to network with, you know, six or 12 different service companies out there. And I said, in the meantime, I'll help to look for you because, you know, nothing's open right now, but I said, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's certain jobs for, for entry level geologists out there, bachelor's degree is, is a mud logger. So I said, maybe, maybe something will come up along those lines. And wouldn't you know it, um, a job come up in, uh, down in Midland, Texas. And, uh, one of the young men, uh, made a phone call and talked to an individual down there and he's moving to Midland, Texas now after two months, uh, after he started training and, uh, he had moved up to a supervisor with the, with the current companies doing water transfer. And then the, another young man just told me that, uh, there's another opportunity that I gave him that, that might work out as a mud logger too with his, with his geology degree. And then the, the two other, um, trainees are actually, uh, have been, have been moved up to supervisory positions already after two months. So, but those guys were telling me that, um, the, their training actually, uh, especially with, uh, with getting TEC certified is actually added, uh, more in their, in their wage. Actually, they're getting paid more. And, and it's a nice, it's nice for the companies too, because this way they don't have to, these individuals are paying our company, Energy Safety Institute for training and for the safety training for one thing. And then oil and gas training, obviously, but when they get out there, they are, uh, that company doesn't have to pay a dime for their safety training for those individuals. They're already ready to go. I mean, they're ready to step into their boots and their coveralls, you know, with the company name on it and hard hat and get out there and then go take your drug test, physical, obviously. But uh, they're ready to go. They're not going to be like a deer caught in the headlights when they get out there in a well pad. I mean, they're, they're going to know exactly what, what the equipment is out there if they're on a frack job, so... And uh, run through those list of services that your company does again, the uh, Energy Safety Institute. Yeah, we uh, we provide oil and gas training. Um, you know, basic, basic, uh, basically, I cover um, you know all the operations out there: drilling, completion, production, um, and uh, we do a we do a PEC safe land safety. Uh, training course it's a it's an eight hour course and then once they get that card uh they're certified for for life that that card never expires so but uh like i said they're, they're going to get an oil and gas training for six to eight hours it's it's basically going to be my 35 years in the business from from every i've been well in 35 years i've worked for nine different companies and held 13 different uh career positions from geologists to landman, to drilling completion production engineer, to senior engineer and completions water, uh, vice president of a company, business development manager, um, and also an, an automation tech too as well. So I think I've covered everything. Uh, I've, I've never worked in a refinery, but you know, down downstream, but but let's say upstream, midstream, I guess. So. 
Well, kind of wrapping up here for this this uh, interview here, we'd like to check in a little bit later on with you. I'd like to ask you when we have a little more time about um, some of those high school kids and, and Votex schools and that sort of thing because um, sure. you're cultivating for tomorrow, and one of the big issues right now in oil and gas is the amount of people retiring. And if the young people or even the Gen X people the millennials and, and them that are coming in, if they have an understanding and a respect for the industry that's been built. You know, you and I talked about a lot of these guys don't understand the value of the hard work. What I keep right. thinking of is I don't think they understand the respect that has gone into the industry and the relationship with the land and all that other stuff because, um, you know, it's just – it's. It just seems like energy is becoming so politicized these days that it, it's really too bad because energy shouldn't be political at all. And um, it, it actually should be uh, some of the amazing technology that's been going in to it should be absolutely revered along with um, like you and I have just talked about for the last half hour, which is it's really jump started the global economy. So, I mean, there's so many different angles to look at this and um the, you, you've got a big responsibility cultivating these kids is what I'm getting at. <laughs> yep, sure do. Well, I, I enjoy it. I always wanted to be a teacher, so kind of inadvertently, I, I think I finally am one. So. Well, it, it is, and it's, and it's a tough line too, because you know you, you were at that age too. There's so much that is motivated by social causes that we have to be very um, diligent and very persistent with. Like I, like I said, the, the, the amount of respect and the education and that sort of thing. And that's why I'm glad that we're doing this because um, we, the, these kids and us, me, you, Gen Xers, retirees, we can't get enough education, really. And so the more we, we hear about some of the things that are going on from experts and from people who are actually there, like my next question to you is just to get kind of an update of the Marcellus. You're the guy out there, boots on the ground. And, you know, I mean, you go to other shale plays too, but... You know, you kind of home based out of that uh, Marcellus area. So, do, do you got anything kind of to update us from that, just on a on, on a basis of activity or or a mood or a vibe? Well, it's it's probably like all the other shale plays. Everybody wants to gear up, but uh, they're having. A, I know I know all the operators out here, and the service companies, and that are, are still they're just having a heck of a time. Um, getting in, getting the people they need, and what what's happening, uh, Jason, is they're overworking the people that they, the good people that they do have out there. Yeah, I'm hearing I just, that too. I, you know, I'm afraid that you know. I, I hope those guys don't leave. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah, they're gearing up. I mean, every everybody's uh, it, it's it's going crazy again, like it was a few years ago up here. Yeah, and it's and you know the way that this thing goes. Price goes up a few bucks, ten bucks, boom, and it's the starter pistols off, and all of a sudden you, you went from, you know, either gearing up or being idle to now you're like three steps behind, and you didn't even realize that's, the race started. <laughs> so that's right, that's right. I and mean, everybody's, uh, and I know one smaller service company I know is buying buying up equipment like you wouldn't believe, but he said I don't have anybody to operate it, Mike. That's my problem now. <laughs> You know, yeah. So, but it's a good thing. We'll we'll find them. We'll find them, people, like we did before. We've always, you know, um, you know, in some cases, we might need some help from out west. I know one company needed to needed to uh, to bring a crew up here, and they had to have them come up here, and and that was just like when the, you know, when, with with our first Mar Marcellus boom back when we first started drilling horizontal wells, we didn't have the horsepower up here to do those wells. So they had to bring, you know, everybody up from Texas and out west and and then teach us all up here in Appalachia how to do it. And then, and uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll find workers. We just, like I said, we just got to mm -hmm. take it straight and, and get them out there for them. So. Well, Marcellus Mike from the Energy Safety Institute. Uh, let's uh, kind of wind down a little bit. I'm just looking at the clock. I got a kid I got to pick up at Taekwondo here in about five, ten minutes. So uh, uh, ways people can get in touch with you, that sort of thing. You know, they should call you now 
before later uh, is what I'm getting at. Is so you know, g- give give out to any sort of contact information that uh, your potential customers could be uh, looking for right now. All right, folks, are you writing down pen and paper? You got it out. You got your iPad, oh. Notepad out, whatever the smartphone is that people write with these days. So okay, I yeah. stalled. I stalled long enough. So go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, they can, uh, Jason, they call me anytime uh, on my cell phone, 814-897-3610. Um, you can email me at m for joan underscore four at msn.com. And that's uh, Mike for Joan, right? That's correct. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Cool. Yeah. All right, sir. Well, uh, thank you much. And we'll be uh, talking down the line here. Like I said, I'm going to check in with you more often because I want to find out not only about the Marcellus, but um, some of this educational cultivation stuff, because it's it's one of the most important and critical things going on in the oil and gas world right now that doesn't involve fracking. (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, yeah, we're we're looking for big things up here in the next you know, a couple of months, we're going to be starting some things off and some some schools here before the end. Actually, I got to I got to make a couple of trips out to uh, several schools down in Washington, PA, to to uh, talk to some senior senior high students down there and see if they, we can get them in the workforce. 